my name is Hema Patel and I live in Southern California. I am a, of Indian origin and I have two sons and one of them is a 30 year old and he has cystic fibrosis and I have a 28 year old son that does not have cystic fibrosis. He's also not a carrier of the gene. Hi, my name is Rohini McKee and I live in Menlo Park, California. We have one daughter named Rhea Louise McKee and she's five years old and was born with cystic fibrosis. Hi everyone, my name is Harini. I come from the southern part of India. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I have two sons, Srivas and Abhijit, um, and they both have cystic fibrosis. Before my son got diagnosed, I was absolutely not familiar with the medical condition called cystic fibrosis, and I don't know anyone in the family who's been diagnosed with it. All I've heard is pretty much asthma. That's the only thing that's kind of prevalent in my family. So cystic fibrosis is, I mean, I got kind of introduced to that, you know, when my son got diagnosed with it. Hi everybody, my name is Sri Ram Vaidyanathan. Uh, I'm an instructor at Stanford University. I work in the lab of Dr. Matthew Porteous. Um, so over the past five years, I've been working on developing a gene, gene correction strategy to treat cystic fibrosis. And over the course of time, I came to learn about CF in Asians as an additional topic of interest uh, for myself. And so cystic fibrosis is one of those diseases which is caused by errors in this gene called the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. So this protein codes for an ion channel which helps uh, your body transport chloride ions from one side of uh, an epithelial layer to the other side. Uh, and, and when you have mutations in this channel, your chloride transport is affected. Rio was diagnosed through the newborn screening process. We had no idea that cystic fibrosis ran in our family. When I was pregnant, I was tested to see if I was a cystic fibrosis mutation carrier and it came back negative. I later learned that I have a very rare mutation, so it wasn't part of the list of mutations that are tested generally for pregnant women. And thus, since I came back negative at the time, my husband, who has a more common mutation, was not tested. And so we didn't know until she was about 30 days old and we got the results from our pediatrician. When my son was, uh, older son was three years of age, um, he, was, he was not gaining any weight and he would have this constant stomach cramping and he would uh, complain and cry, you know, about the pain. Uh, so we took uh, we took him to the pediatrician and uh, first he told us that let's just wait for some time and see how things uh, come out to be. My oldest son, he was diagnosed at the age of 14. He, as a child, as a baby, he was quite sick. He used to get coughs and colds and we attributed that to him being in day nursery and he used to catch things very easily. Um, ear infections were a big thing for him and we actually had to have tubes in his ears. So that those things were thought to be all related to his ear infections. But there was not really anything indicating any tests. I had not, no clue about cystic fibrosis. So I was not one to ask the doctors and they did not know themselves, I'm, I'm assuming, because nothing was ever talked about. But he was very sick as a child and um, my experience with his babyhood and childhood was very different to my other son. CF is a disease that can affect different parts of the body. So CFTR is expressed in your sweat glands, it's, it's expressed in your respiratory tracts and nasal passages, uh, and it's also expressed in your GI tract and reproductive tracts. And as a consequence, then if you look at symptoms, you can have symptoms associated with all of these organs. So babies born with CF often have saltier sweat. Uh, they, CF patients often present repeated chronic sinus infections. They also have severe repeated respiratory infections. Uh, and then they also often tend to have gastrointestinal problems. So blocked intestine, uh, poor growth, uh, trouble absorbing food, bulky greasy stools, and so on and so forth. When we went back to him, he kind of noticed that he would have this constant uh, sinus issues or some sort of a coughing. Then he went ahead and ordered for the sweat test. Um, so, and that came out to be positive. Uh, by then I had my uh, second uh, child who, who was about at that time six months old and uh, they, they did the sweat test for him but they couldn't get enough sweat but and then they did the genetic testing and then the younger one also was 
uh, you know, diagnosed with it and we started the treatment for him as well. Prior to Rhea's diagnosis with cystic fibrosis, I really only knew some of like those horror stories that the media shares, but I knew nothing about it. Prior to my son's diagnosis, I, I just absolutely not heard of it. So obviously there was no family members who were diagnosed with it. I did not know anyone else of Indian origin that had cystic fibrosis. I had never heard the word before. And so the diagnosis came as a total surprise and shock. I had no no friends that were doctors that even knew about it. I think the only prevalent medical condition that I could as t at that time was, remember was asthma. When we think about the people that CF affects, CF has historically been characterized uh, you know, most thoroughly in Caucasians. However, CF does affect people of all races, right? But when you look at other races, so for example, we think that about one in 17,000 African-Americans are affected by CF and maybe about one in 31,000 Asian-Americans might be affected by CF. However, the thing to remember here is these are estimates not necessarily based completely on studies in Asia or Africa. Oftentimes, a lot of data for these estimates tend to come from other countries for example, the U.S., where you have an expat population of uh, people originating from these countries. As an Indian, I did not know anyone with cystic fibrosis. I talked to my family, my parents, my aunts, uncles, and no one knew anyone in the family who had cystic fibrosis or was diagnosed with anything similar to cystic fibrosis, and it was a complete shock to everyone. In fact, I was so far in not understanding what it was that I asked him to test a few times before I could believe that he had cystic fibrosis. Because CF is so poorly characterized in the native countries of South Asia and uh, East Asia and other parts of Asia, we actually went to the registries maintained by the USA, UK and Canada. So as a result, our study also really just focuses on the expat population but our hope is if we find enough patients in these registries then the numbers that we then uh, come up with would be more close to what's uh, the real picture in these countries and it, it might also give us a, a more motivation to then go screen more intensively in these populations if you feel like there's something more going on than your care team is picking up on continue to bring it up. If you notice that there is a pattern in how they're eating or how they're sleeping or how they're behaving or coughing or anything, if you see some symptoms that are similar to that of CF, document it so the physicians can see and start to better understand what you know. You are your child's best advocate. You know your child better than anyone else and trust that instinct and continue to get more references and talk to more people so you can make sure that you are able to get the best care for your child as possible. At the time my son was diagnosed, I think there was a perception that, you know, cystic fibrosis definitely uh, does not exist in the South Asian community. It's more of a Caucasian disease. One of the things that I found out after my son's diagnosis is what the, the information available to me online and in anything that I read indicated that cystic fibrosis was something that happened with children of European descent, which was one of the reasons I made them test him several times, because I did not believe that this could happen to me or to him. I have to believe that there are more people of Indian descent that have cystic fibrosis than they realize. I don't think it's commonly assumed to be in our population and often misdiagnosed for other pulmonary diseases perhaps or just overlooked and just thought to be something specific to this child but not actually given the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis and i'm interested to see as diagnostic uh, opportunities improve in india if we do see more cases of cystic fibrosis amongst this community so the diagnosis i would say would be late in many children of any other descent but European due to the fact that the, the information that was out there about cystic fibrosis indicated that you don't need to test anybody other than people of European descent. So it's very important that we have the awareness going among the Indian communities. The so first is to improve the, you know, the lifespan of the child by early diagnosis and early treatment. And the second is if to make sure that we have modulated that are very specific, you know, to mutations uh, that we could find in the Indian community.
Well, for me, it's super important that CF be more understood, especially amongst the Indian community. It's, it's considered a chronic condition. It's a rare disease. And there are so many stigmas that are attached to that. And then to term a child as the sick, diseased one, those are the kind of things that I feel are missing, misunderstood. And especially as there's been very little awareness created in the Indian community, I feel very strongly that that would go a long way in helping parents that suffer alone, uh, children that suffer alone, for them to know that there are more people that, that have this kind of condition and that are, there are support out there and that breaking the stigma is the first thing that we need to do. New therapies called modulator therapies have been introduced into the market, and these have revolutionized the care of CF patients. But when you look at uh, the who the modulator therapies are designed to treat, uh, the most effective uh, modulators at this point are uh, designed to treat patients who are affected by FI, the FI8 del mutation. So uh, you need to have at least one copy of the FI8 del mutation, and there are a few other mutations that also respond to these modulators, but you need to have have one of those mutations that respond to those modulators in order to be uh, in order to benefit from this uh, new ther therapeutic modality. So then we look to see how many of our South Asian patients um, uh, may be eligible to, to be treated uh, using modulator therapies. And we were again surprised to find out that about six, six out of the nine most frequent mutations that are seen in South Asians uh, are not responsive to modulator therapies. I, it just feels like, and probably because I'm Indian, it feels tragic that like we have these diagnostic, diagnostic capacity in the United States. It, it is possible, right? We know like scientifically it is possible to diagnose these things. And so like this concept that, you know, well, we don't generally test for them and like, sure, they're not gonna probably be testing for the mutation I carry yet, but like, let's make sure at least the ones that I'm getting tested for, everyone is eligible to get tested for it. And lastly, uh, Asian patients tend to be affected by rarer mutations that cause CF. And this has implications both in diagnosis and treatment. Um, and so again, there's another reason for us to pay closer attention to the possibility of CF in this population and uh, come up with new methods to diagnose and treat these patients. The more we know, the more data we have, the more patients we can follow, the more treatment that these patients can receive, the better their lives will be, the better their lives will be of everyone with cystic fibrosis because we will have more information. There's so much research and development going on right now, but, but we can only research and develop for mutations that we know about and for populations that are being affected by it. So the more people that we realize have cystic fibrosis, the more we can learn from them and the better the entire community will be. And hopefully CF one day does stand for Cure Found.